Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's guide, we're going to be focusing on setting up your Restoration Druid ready for patch 8.3 Arena. This is going to be included in an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, trinkets, and the new corruption mechanic. Finishing off by covering your rotation and playstyle inside of Arena. Kicking things off, let's start with talents. Restoration Druid has a few adaptations depending on matchup and playstyle, although a good baseline for talents should look like this. Prosperity, Wild Charge, Guardian Affinity, Mighty Bash, Soul of the Forest, Stonebark, and then Germination. So, when do you want to deviate from these baseline talents? The first change you can look to make is on the level 45 row, Guardian Affinity. Whilst a solid pick defensively, and when you're going to be the focus of the enemy team, offers nothing offensively. For those situations where you need added aggressive plays, then Feral Affinity is going to be the pick. So think things like 2v2 where damage is often more valued than healing, compositions like MLD in 3v3 also allow you to run Feral Affinity without that much trouble. But generally speaking, if you need added damage and aggression at the cost of some survivability, you should pick Feral Affinity up. Basically, anytime you can get away without this survivability of Guardian, then this is your go-to. There is also some niche cases where Balance Affinity also could be a very valid pick. Balance Affinity allows you to enter Boomkin form, where you can then cast Regrowth, Nourish, and your Dispel. This can be great versus Rogue Mage, for instance, when you know that you're not going to be at risk of being the target. This just gives you a little easier of a time dealing with Polymorph. Now, the only other talent you would likely to be swapping on a regular basis is on your level 90 row. Depending on your composition, Spring Blossom can provide you a ton more healing throughout the game. Although the only real time you would consider picking this up is when paired with either a Shadow Priest or Destruction Wallop. So mainly low mobility casters who are not going to be consistently moving out of your mushroom. Now, a few other niche talents you might end up swapping are firstly Tree of Life. This can be taken instead of Soul of the Forest versus double DPS in 2v2 specifically. Outside of this, there isn't really a case where you'd want it. Finally, Mass Root. Whilst you lose a stun, this can be very good in 2v2, specifically into Demon Hunters. This will allow you to kite a lot easier and be much more self-sufficient. Moving now on to PvP talents, let's again start with a good baseline. For this, I recommend Focus Growth, Cyclone and Overgrowth, but let's cover the other options and why you would swap between them. First off, if you're playing with a Warlock or even a Shadow Priest, Cyclone is going to lose a lot of value as it shares the same diminishing return. The same goes for certain melee cleaves where you're not going to be consistently pushing in for CC all that often. But if you can get use out of Cyclone and land in that CC is one of your win conditions, then it's a must have. Focus Growth is one you rarely want to ever swap out. It provides very good healing on your primary target, allowing your life bloom to in turn stack up to free. Overgrowth, on the other hand, is our recovery mechanic and allows you to get up all your healing over time effects with one button. A must have versus any mage or high CC based composition. You can however drop this in some situations for some more overall healing against compositions when you're unlikely to have your hots ball off the target. So think compositions that lack crowd control. Now you're going to be swapping out these talents on occasion based on your own composition and what you're coming up against in arena. Master Shapeshifter is one you'll never really want to pick up outside of 2v2. But if you are playing 2v2, then it's the best aggressive talent. Flat out increasing your damage whilst in cat form by 25%. If you can get use out of it and need extra damage in 2v2, swap it for either Cyclone or Overgrowth. Fawns, on the other hand, is a PvP talent you'll often be picking up. It's great when facing any team with a melee. If you think you need some extra free damage or even a pseudo defensive, then Fawns is the pick instead of, again, either Overgrowth or Cyclone. Nourish is very niche, but you will still find some situations where this will be useful. Nourish is great in scenarios when you're going to need additional healing and are able to freely cast. So this is primarily taken when you're playing with casters and can just sit at the back 
and pump out the heals. Great for when you know the game is going to end up in dampening as well. Now again, another niche healing option similar to Nourish is Revitalize. This is good against melees, although you wouldn't usually pick this up. But in some rare cases where you need triple healing talents, pairing this up with Overgrowth and Focus Growth can give you some very strong non-casting healing output. And our last PvP talent worth a mention is going to be Mark of the Wild. This is a good pickup specifically versus Destruction Warlocks, reducing a lot of their passive damage dealt. Okay, that's our normal and PvP talents covered, now let's talk essences. Starting off with your major slot. For this, of course, we've got a few different options. Vitality Conduit was recently buffed and is an extremely strong option. Great to recover, great overall healing, and just all around strong defensively. Whereas a more offensive option is Crucible of Flame. You'll primarily want this for 2v2, although there are some rare cases in 3v3 where the added damage could be useful. And if you know the game is going to down come down to mana, the best major mana essence is going to be Memory of Lucid Dreams. Great for those longer games, giving you a lot of mana back and extra healing when used. Our final option for the major essence is Conflict and Strive. This gives you overgrowth baseline as restoration. The times you want to consider this is when you're at high risk of dying inside of a stun, as the extra versatility will make you a lot more durable. Also can be taken in some cases where you can get very good value out of an added PvP talent and still want the recovery mechanic of overgrowth. Okay, moving now on to minor essences, at level 75 neck you gain access to three slots. For these we have two must-haves and then a third depended on scenario. Our first must have is Spirit of Preservation. This provides a great boost to healing on your regrowth, resulting in your Soul of the Forest regrowth being all that more powerful. This is also great as it provides 10 passive corruption resistance. Lifebinder's Invocation's minor effect, Seed of Eonar, is our second must have. This is just strong mana free healing working consistently throughout the game. Great in all scenarios. Now moving on to our last slot. First of all, if you don't have Vitality as your major essence, you're going to want it as your minor. The power of this essence is absurd, providing a constant pseudo spirit link effect and a damage absorb consistently doing very high healing throughout the game. The other two options for this third slot are going to be Memory of Lucid Dreams and Conflict and Strive. If you need added mana, then Lucid Dreams is the go-to. If you want some added damage or survivability, then pick up Conflict and Strife. Up next, we've got Gearing. In this section, we're going to be covering stat priority, Trinkets, Azerite, and also everybody's favourite new addition to the game, Corruption. Starting off with stat priority, nothing's changed. You still want haste and mastery above all else, with versatility being okay, whilst critical strike should look to be avoided. It's good to have a balance of both haste and mastery. Too much haste, you'll do very low healing. Too much mastery and your globals will just be too long, so find a good balance. Trinkets have become more and more important, with them now being an integral part of gearing. For Restoration Druid, there are two standout trinkets. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw is a must-have. This gives you mana back, helping to combat some of Restoration Druid's mana issues, and even does ridiculous damage whilst giving you that mana back. If you haven't got one of these, get into the raid and make sure you get one. The other must-have trinket is the Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. This one, again, is a must-have. In fact, you never really want to play without these two trinkets. The Voodoo Totem is used as a very strong single target heal, that can be used whilst locked out, before CC chains, or just in numerous ways. Just trust me, do yourself a favour and get one. There are a few other situational trinkets that can still find their uses. The Fangs of Intertwined Essence from Temple of Sephralis can be a great mana option for when mana is the name of the game, whereas either a Safeguard or Battlemaster can be great personal defensive options to deal with being trained. Azerite for Restoration Druid is mainly focused around one trait. Grove Tendon. Your main focus is to get this on all three pieces of your Azero. This is the best throughput trait that adds a strong hot to your Swiftman. To pair up with free Grove Tendon, you ideally want one Waking Dream. A singular Waking Dream has a ton of value, reducing your Yasira's gift healing to every four seconds, as well as some added additional healing. The same goes for both Lively Spirit and Rampant Growth. Both are very good one trait wonders. To obtain the best Azerite setup possible, it all drops from the new raid. The helmet is stealing guys from Mount, the chest drops from Carapace, and the shoulders are from Nzoth. This gives you three Grove Tendon, one Waking Dream, one Lively Spirit, and one Rampant Growth. But honestly, if you've got three Grove Tendon and one Waking Dream, you're good to go. Next up, we've got everybody's favorite, love or hate, Corruption. Totally balanced, not RNG at all, and just great fun. 
healers, when it comes to corruption, don't really have any specific healing corruptions in PvP per se. Taking this into account, the best corruptions right now for a Restoration Druid are going to be the passive percent increases to their favoured stats, so either Haste or Mastery. Alternatively, the proc Haste or Mastery again is almost as good. Whereas if you're looking for something more offensive, then Infinite Stars is your go-to. Why this is the best for Druids is that it requires you to do no damage in order to proc. As long as you're in combat with the target, you can proc stars on them. Okay then, now we've covered everything in terms of gearing and setting up your character ready for arena, let's now discuss playstyle. First and foremost is making sure to have your healing over time effects on the targets taking damage. This is a pretty obvious one, but making sure you maintain your life blooms and rejuvenation on the enemy's kill target is just vital to keeping them alive. Druid obviously relies heavily on their healing over time effects, the healing and their mastery, so never neglect them. Another very common mistake druids make is misusing their Soul of the Forest. Now, Soul of the Forest is obviously from Swiftmen. This means casting Swiftmen twice in a row is a huge waste, and you should always look to avoid doing so. As for what to use your Soul of the Forest on, you in almost all scenarios want to find the time to use it on a regrow. However, if you're stuck in bear form or there are multiple interrupts available, then use it on rejuvenation is a good alternative. Shapeshifting is a very important part of Druid's overall playstyle. Now, there are many scenarios where you're going to be wanting to shapeshift. Shifting into any form will of course make you immune to all polymorph effects. So Hex, Repentance, and a Mage's Polymorph. Travel form can be an excellent way to not only reposition quickly, but as a way to kite your enemies. Shifting off enemy slows, and then using the increased movement speed gained from travel form is a great way to kite low mobility melees. Now, another extremely important part of Druid's playstyle is mana efficiency. You can easily burn through your entire mana bar on a Druid very quickly, so knowing how to be mana efficient is going to be key to success. There are a few different things you can do to improve on this, and good innovate usage is one of them. Look to use this early in a game to counter heavy pressure from the enemy team, or at times where you have no hots up and you're going to have to spend a lot of mana healing. Do not neglect this ability. Healing wise, you should always be looking to have life bloom up. If you're focused growth, try to never let the free stack drop from your main target. This not only is very efficient healing, but it also in turn gives you clear casting procs. Clear casting procs are another thing you should always be looking to utilize. It's a free, no mana cost of regrowth, which can be combined with Soul of the Forest for some insane healing output. Now, there are a few trap abilities you can use as a druid that are going to drain your mana fast. These are wild growth, in which should be never pressed outside of Innovate. Your Efflorescence, which again should ideally never be pressed outside of Innovate. Unless, of course, you're playing with Spring Blossoms and a low mobility caster, in which case you should try not to be consistently having to replace it. The next very important playstyle you need to adapt to is playing aggressive. There are a few different ways to go about this. First is primarily for 2v2 and that's making good use out of Feral Affinity. Whenever possible, doing damage and going for restuffs to further assist your teammate. There are also some cases in 3v3 where you'll want Feral Affinity. Just always be sure to not heavily fall behind or get caught out whilst doing so. The alternative way to assist your team offensively is with crowd control, using Cyclone throughout the game to reduce damage, lock down healers, or even keep targets at low health. And our last key playstyle for Restoration Druid is Defensive Play. Your three main defensives are Iron Bark, Barkskin, and Overgrowth. Barkskin can be used while stunned, so you should primarily be saving it for that scenario, as a way to then survive, get out, and begin healing. Iron Bark, on the other hand, can be given to yourself and teammates. This is what makes Restoration Druid so strong right now. Having this powerful cooldown on such a low cooldown helps you always stay ahead in healing. Look to trade this for strong offensive cooldowns popped by your enemy. Alright then guys, that's going to be it for this 8.3 PvP guide for Restoration Druid. Hope you've got all the information you need to go out and jump into the arena. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave any questions or comments you still may have below.